So coming here for Quiet Maths today, we're going to be looking at the 2022 Higher Maths exam paper and go through the full solutions. Question 1 says the term of the equation of the line perpendicular to 5x plus 2y equals 7 and it passes through the point minus 1, 6. So let's go ahead and rearrange the 5x plus 2y equals 7 and find out the gradient of that line. So taking the 5x across, we get 2y is minus 5x plus 7. Dividing through by 2, we get minus 5 over 2x plus 7 over 2. And the gradient of this line is minus 5 over 2. And we want the gradient of the line perpendicular. So we want a negative reciprocal. So our gradient of our perpendicular is equal to just 2 over 5. We can now use y minus b equals mx minus a in the normal way. a and b is minus 1 and 6. So we've got y minus 6 is 2 over 5x minus minus 1. y minus 6, we'll just times that back through by 5, is 2x add 1. So we've got 5y take away 30 is 2x plus 2. Taking the x's across, we've got 5y minus 2x equal 32 and we're done you could you could take the 32 over to the other side and make it equal to zero or you could divide through by five or you can just leave it in that form question two evaluate 2 log 3 6 minus log 3 4 so to start with we can do log base 3 of 6 squared minus log base 3 of 4 Minus sin logs means we're going to take it to one log and it's divide. So that gives us log base 3 of 6 squared over 4. Just put that in the brackets so it's obvious what we're doing. 6 squared is 36. So that's log base 3 of 36 over 4. So that gives us the log of base 3. 4 nines is 36. And 3 squared is 9. So the answer to this is just... 2 because 3 squared is 9. Question 3. A function is defined by h of x is 4 plus 1 over 3x. x is a member of the real numbers. Find the inverse function h of minus 1x. So remember one way to do this is just say let's let y equal 4 plus a third x. And if we make x the subject we have found the inverse function. So I'll take away 4 to start with and that gives me a third of x. L times by 3 and that gives me x so I can immediately say that the inverse function is simply 3 bracket x minus 4 instead of the y replacing the, the y for the x and that's me done. Question 4 says differentiate y equals the square root of x cubed minus 2x to the minus 1 so we need to put it in a differentiable form first so we've got y equals x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2x to the minus 1. And we can now differentiate the y by the x. Take the power down to the front and take away 1 from the power. Minus times a minus is a plus. So it's plus 2x. Take away 1 from the power again. And can't be simplified much more than that. You could make the negative 2 positive but there's no need to do that for the purposes of the exam so we'll just leave it like that. A line makes an angle of pi over 3 radians with the y-axis and passes through the point minus 2, 0 as shown below. Determine the equation of the line. Do not be tempted to think about the gradient being the tan of pi over 3 because that would be wrong because that we need it with the x-axis. So if I do that we need to find this angle here. Now I like to think of in degrees. So this to me is 180 divided by 3 which is 60 degrees. Which means this side here is 90 minus 60 which is 30 degrees. So our gradient of our line is tan of 30 degrees. So that is an exact value that you just need to know but for the sake of completeness 
I will draw a triangle that may help you. So if I put one as two here and one here, two squared minus one squared gives me root three. That gives me 60 over here and 30 over here. The tan of 30 is one over root three. So we've got a gradient. So then our point A and B, Y minus B equals MX minus A is normal. So we've got y minus 0 equals 1 over root 3, x minus minus 2. y equals x over root 3, or 1 over root 3x, plus 2 over root 3. And there you go, we've got the equation of a straight line. Question 6 says evaluate between minus 5 and 2. The integral of 10 minus 3x to the minus a half dx. So I'm going to integrate first and then put my limits in. So the integral of 10 minus 3x to the minus a half, I need to add 1 to the power. So 10 minus 3x to the half. Divide by my new power, which is a half. But then I need to times by, well, I need to differentiate this, which is minus 3x. So that gives me minus 3. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. So we've got 10 minus 3x to the half on top. All over minus 3 over 2. So that gives me, dividing by a fraction, I can just times by the reciprocal, so flip it. So it's minus 2, 10 minus 3x to the half over 3, or minus 2 thirds. Okay, now let's put our limits in. So it's between minus 5 and 2. So we've got minus 2 thirds, 10 minus 3x to the half, between minus 5 and 2. So we'll just substitute both values in with a takeaway in between. So just being very careful, making sure we make no mistakes. So we've got minus two thirds for the first one. I'll just put big brackets around it. 10 minus three times two to the power of a half. Take away minus two thirds again. 10 minus three X. So it's three times minus five this time. And that is also to the power of a half. So let's just be methodical about this. The first bracket gives me minus two thirds. Minus six, 10 take away six is four. So that's times four to the power of a half. Take away the second bracket, minus two thirds times where well, we've got Minus 3 times 5 is minus 15. Positive 15 because of a minus times a minus. 15 plus 10 is 25. So 25 to the power of a half. You should recall that to the power of a half is the same as square rooting. So that just gives me minus 2 thirds times 2. Take away minus 2 thirds times 5. That's minus four thirds for the first one. Minus times a minus is a plus. Five times two is 10. 10 take away four is six. Six divided by three is two. So two is our final answer. Question seven says triangles A, B, C and D, A, D, E are both right angled. And we've got an angle of Q at BAC and an angle of R at DAE. And we have to work out sine R and sine Q. So that'll just be so katoa. And then determine the value of sine Q minus R, which we'll use the expansion at the start of the exam paper. Let's give ourselves more space and do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate these triangles out to get my sine R and sine Q. So if I draw both of the triangles, I've got the small one, which has got an angle of R and it's one on this side, to be clear, this is DEA. And then if we look on the bottom, that's three. 
3 squared is 9 plus 1 squared is 10, so the hypotenuse is the square root of 10. Taking the big triangle, which is right angled as well, that's BCA. Looking at that triangle, we know that the length between C and A is 2, and the hypotenuse is root 13. So we've got 2 and root 13. Root 13 squared is 13, 2 squared is 4, taking that away gives me 9, square root of 9 is 3, so we get 3 here. So we can now do sine r, sine q. So part 1, the sine of r equals opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over square root of 10. Part 2, the sine of q I'll put my Q in. Opposite over hypotenuse, 3 over the square root of 13. And we've got the value of sine r and sine q. Part b says, hence determine the value of sine q minus r. So let's just expand that. Part b, sine of q minus r. Well, that just equals sine q cos r minus cos q sine r. So we'll need to know cos r and cos q. So sine q we already know is 3 over root 13. Using my same triangles, cos r is 3 over root 10. minus cos q is 2 over root 13 and we already know sine r is 1 over root 10. So we can now just fix that by times times and effects they haven't taken away. So that gives me 9 over root 130 minus 2 over root 130 9 minus 2 is 7. And as root 130 cannot be simplified any further, you could uh, rationalise the denominator, but there's no need to, so we'll just leave it as 7 over root 130. And we're done. Question A, solve log 6x plus log 6x plus 2 equals 5, where x is greater than 0. Let's give ourselves more space for this one. Here's the question again. So we've got a log plus a log with the same base, so we can just times whatever it's logged of. In other words, we've got log base 6 of x times x plus 5 equals 2. So that's log. So that means it's 6 squared equals x times x plus 5. And now it's just a simple national 5 quadratic to solve. We've got x squared plus 5x equals 36. So x squared plus 5x minus 36 equals 0. Double brackets. We've got x and x. 9 and 4 make 36 when they're times, but make 5 when they're taken away. So we've got plus 9 take away 4. So x equals 4 or x equals minus 9 and usually we would have two solutions but just a quick check x is greater than 0 it says so this one is invalid because x has to be greater than 0 so this is our final answer x equals 4 and we're done question 9 solve cos 2x equals 5 cos x minus 3 let's have a look at this one in more depth so we've got a cost equation with a cost 2x. So we're going to expand cost 2x. And there's three ways to do it. I've checked the start of exam paper. But you'll notice the right-hand side has a cost x in it. So we probably want to just keep it all cost x. So I'm going to expand the left-hand side to become 2 cos squared x minus 1 equals 5 cos x minus 3. Now that's essentially a quadratic. 
because you've got a squared term, a term and then a number. So if we take it off the left hand side, we can solve it like a quadratic usually. So we've got 2 cos squared x minus 5 cos x. And then we've got minus 1 plus 3, which is plus 2. And that equals 0 on the right hand side. Double brackets. 2 cos x and cos x gives you 2 cos squared x. 2 times 2 is 4 and 1 is 5. So it's 2 and 1 and we've got minus 4 minus 1 makes minus 5 cos x. 2 times 1 is 2. So we get 2 brackets. 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0 or cos x minus 2 equals 0. Let's deal with the right hand side one straight away. If cos x minus 2 equals 0, that would mean that cos x equals 2. No solution. Because cos, if you look at the cos graph, it only goes up to 1 or down to minus 1. So the right, left hand side, cos x is equal to 1 half. So we need to solve that equation and it's an exact value again. So let's draw an exact value triangle to work out what cos x equals a half is if we're not sure. We've got 2, 1 and root 3, remember, and then this would be 60 degrees and this would be 30 degrees. And since we want cos as a half, 1 over 2 opposite adjacent over hypotenuse, it's 60. So x degrees equals 60, and we want it up to 360, remember? So if you're not sure, you've got your cast diagram, or you could draw a graph of the cos. Cos is positive, so it's a and c, 360 minus. So our other answer is 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees, and we're done. Question 10 says the diagram shows the graph of a cubic function y equals f of x, and the curve's got stationary points at 0, 3 and 4, 0, with the sketch a graph of 2f of x, add 1. So we're multiplying by 2, and then we're adding 1. So if we just check on this diagram to start with, if we multiply 0, 3 by 2, we're going to get 0, 6, but then we add 1, so that, that's going to become 0 and 7. Similarly, 0, 4, 4, 0, or if we multiply 0 by 2, we get 0, but when we add 1, so that's going to go up by 1 to get 4, 1. So I just need to copy the same curve on our diagram, but with these points instead. So let me just show you that. So I've drawn some x and y axes. So we're going to have up here, just label that 0, 7. Now I don't actually have the axes you were given in the exam, so I've just drawn some. You might have had a much nicer axes than this. And then I go along 4 up 1, so I'm just going to call that 4 1. And we just copy the curve that we already had. So we go along, turning point here, down through here and back up. And there we go. There's our marks there. State the coordinates of the stationary points in the graph of y was f over half x. So looking at our points, we've got 0 3. So if we double 0, we get 0. So it's still going to be 0 3. And for the second point, we have got 4, 0. So double 4, because a half, half will get back to 4, gives us 8. So we get 8 and 0. Just double check, half of 8 is 4, so we get 4, 0 back. Complete the square. So we take 2 out as a common factor, and we get x squared plus 6x. And we've got 23 sitting about on the end. And we complete the square in the x squared plus 6x. So 2 is our, our factor. We have got x plus 3 squared. And we take away 3 squared. And we've still got plus 23 sitting on the end. So we've got 2 x plus 3 squared minus 9 plus 23. Well, 2 nines is 18. So we've got 2 x plus 3 squared minus 18 plus 23, 2x plus 3 all squared, 
23 take away 18 is 5, so plus 5. And that's it, as required. Question 12, f of x is 4 sine 3x minus pi over 3, evaluate f dash pi over 6. So a differentiation sign question. So we'll immediately differentiate f of x. So we've got f dash x is equal to, I'll check the front of the paper if you're not sure, but sine becomes cos. So we've got 4 cos of 3x minus pi over 3. And we've then times by the, but inside the brackets differentiated, so times by 3. So tidying that up, f dash x is just simply equal to 12 cos 3x minus pi over 3. And now we want to work out what it is when we've got pi over 6. So f dash pi over 6, just substitute pi over 6 in, is 12 cos 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 3. Okay, we can tidy that up a little bit. 12 cos, common denominator is 6, 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6. That's 12 cos pi over 6. Again, another exact value. If you're not sure what pi over 6 is, think of it in degrees. 180 divided by 6 is 30. So we're looking at the cost of 30. Exact value triangle, again, if you're not sure, we've got 2 here. We've got 1 here, and that gives us root 3 here. That's 60. That's 30. 180 divided by 6, 30 degrees in other words. Opposite adjacent of hypotenuse root 3 over 2. So that is 12 times root 3 over 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so it's 6 root 3. Question 13 says, show that x plus 2 is a factor of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 20x minus 24. Then it says we have to solve f of x equals 0. And then there's a, bit, a graph question which I'll deal with later. So let's do part A first. Let's give ourselves some more space, shall we? So part A, to show that x plus 2 is a factor, you could directly substitute minus 2 in, but since you're going to have to solve it anyway, we might as well use synthetic division. There's other ways, but that's the way I prefer. So I'm going to set my synthetic division up. We've got 1x cubed minus 2x squared minus 20x and minus 24, and we're substituting minus 2 in because it's x add 2. So 1 drops down, that gives me minus 2, that gives me minus 4. Minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 20 is minus 12. Minus 12 times minus 2 is 24. 24 take away 24 is 0. So since f of minus 2 equals 0, x plus 2 is a factor of f of x. If you make no statement here, you're, you're making a mistake. You need to make a statement, okay? Right, part two, hence or otherwise solve f of x equals zero. So we're making f of x equal to zero. We've already got one factor, x plus two. And our second factor is x squared minus 4x minus 12 from this bit here. And we're saying that equals zero. So we have to solve this equation. Hopefully it factorizes. We've got x and x, 6 and 2, minus 6 plus 2, so we've got a repeated root. Minus 6 times 2 is minus 12, minus 6 add 2 is minus 4, so just checking that. So our answer is x equals minus 2, x equals minus 2, and x equals 6. And we're done there. Let's go back to the graph now. It says the diagram shows the graph of y equals f of x, the f of x we've just done. The graph of x minus k has a stage point at 1, 0, state of value of k. Well, we have just solved this equation, so we know what these stationary points are. We've got minus 2, 0 already here. If we go along to 1, that's moved along by 3. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. So our value of k is just. Three, and we're done.
Question 14. C1 is the circle with equation x minus 7 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals 100. Part A1, state the centre limit radius of the circle C1. The centre is just given by this. So we've got 7 minus 5. So our centre is 7 minus 5. And our radius, well, we just square root 100. So that's just 10. Nice and simple. And if you needed help, you could check the start of the exam paper for the formulas of a circle. Part 2. Hence, or otherwise, show that the point P minus 2, 7 lies outside circle C1. If I find the distance between P and my centre, if it's less than or equal to the radius, then it's either inside the circle or touching. But if it's outside, if it's bigger than the radius, it can't be touching, it can't be in the, on the circle. The distance between the centre and P. So the distance formula, Pythagoras essentially, you've got the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Where our points are just x1, y1, x2, y2. So that's the square root of, we've got 7 minus minus 2 squared plus our y's, we have got minus 5 minus 7 squared. So that gives me 9 squared plus minus 12 squared, 81 plus 144. 81 becomes, 144 becomes 145, plus another 80 is 225. 15 squares 225. So since the distance of 15 is bigger than the radius, of 10, the point P lies outside of C1. Okay, done. Part B, determine the values of R for which C1 and C2 have exactly one point of intersection. So, our points for centre, the first circle is 7 minus 5, remember. And the second circle is minus 2, 7. And the distance between the two centres we've already worked out is 15. So we've got the first situation where you've got your two centres here. If I draw a line connecting the distances, the centres, we know that this line here is 15. And you should be able to see that the radius of the first plus the radius of the second equals 15. So R1 plus R2 equals 15. But we already know the radius of our first circle. Let's just remind ourselves it was 10. So we've got 10 plus R2 equals 15. So R2 could be 5. So that's when they touch externally, but we could touch internally. So you could have this situation as well. So in this case, the distance between the centres is still 15. So if I draw the line between them, we've got a distance of 15. We know the radius of our first circle, R1, is 10. The difference to get R2, which is going to go from here, if I draw it in a different colour, you'll be able to see it, all the way to the outside, that's going to be R2. Then clearly R2 take away R1 is 15. So we've got this situation of R2 take away 10 equals 15. So R2 could also be 25.